the day. All right, let's ride. What's up, man? Number 35, back in this thing. No playing this round. Hosted by your boy Blackout, man. And we back again, as always. And I'm always surprised that I, I make it to the next episode because I can see myself not doing this. I, I can and I can't because some days a nigga be tired and I don't be wanting to do shit. But then I, I know that Monday coming, that sinking feeling of me not having done an episode, is going, it's going, it's going to eat at me. So I got to get in here and do it. And um, to be honest, man, I didn't even really prepare too much. I usually try to make little notes throughout the week, but I really didn't for this one. But then I thought about the number it was and then what that number means to to me after seeing the person, you know, Kevin Durant, who wears the number, go through shit and persevere. And it was like, it was some small shit. But I was like, you know what? For me, for today, for this week, KD is going to stand for keep doing it. When you don't feel like doing some shit that you know you got to do or you feel like you should be doing or you feel like somebody shitting on something you got going on, hey, man, keep doing it. They trashed Kevin Durant for doing what he did. And he kept doing him and minding his business, and he ended up successful. So, KD, man, Trey Fire, keep doing it, man. But don't keep doing dumb shit. Correct it if you make a mistake. And somebody corrected a mistake. That boy, Donnie T., he signed an executive order to stop the uh, separation of the kids at the border, man. And is it a cheap move? Whatever. I don't give a shit because it got stopped. I ain't got time to care. I just wanted it to be done and over with. And now we can focus on really fixing our problem at the border. And I'm not versed well on, on immigration because I live next to the border and I see these people every day and I don't have no problems. Everybody's nice. They either nice or they mind their fucking business. So I don't know who's illegal, who's not. And I had many Mexican friends, and I don't really know that many other illegals, so I can't really speak to it. I can't really comment on it. All I know is this. Let's fix the issue. Let's not make it take, like, fucking 14 years of you having to marry somebody crazy to get over here. If they want to join the military, I think that's a rule. Like, they want to join the military or whatever, boom, fast track the ass on over. Let them join. Now, the background check and the, and the vetting and shit needs to be thorough because, I mean, you never know who's going to try to jump in that thing. But if that's something they want to do, they want to commit some type of civil service, man, let them people in, especially if they got experience because Lord knows we need it. And if we fuck around and lose this workforce and the farmers don't have no crops, we're well, going to be looking assed out because that's going to mess with our GDP, right? It's like gross domestic product. Is that what that is? That's what that is, right? That's what we put out. And I know as a businessman, you don't want to mess that up. So let's be smart about this, man. Let's not let's not fall victim to being in the club, you know, to to feeding some political party or whatever. Make the common sense decision. That's what needs to happen. And if somebody's not seeing the side that you're that you're pushing for, that you're that you're supporting, we got to start finding ways to convey the message without fucking fighting. Now, I used to be a big Facebook troll. Like, I would go to shit that I knew was going to be make me mad just so I can go over there and talk shit. But I had to learn, man. Like, man, that's, there's no real fun in that. That's not what you want to do, man. So I had to just, I had to just kind of kick back and realize that, man, what, while it sounds cool, it's not always the thing to do. And you really don't accomplish shit because once you put somebody in a certain space, they're not going to want to hear you no more. And I feel like in the, this country, we're way past that point. The point of getting in the argument is just to argue because you know for a fact that a certain opposition or a certain side is not going to want to hear nothing you got to say. Or they just wait for you to respond. And while you're building your response, they're waiting 
to re, to rebut that. They have a rebuttal coming because they're trying to predict what you're gonna say next. Like there's been many a times I've been arguing on the on the on the Facebook or some shit like that, and I drop a comment and I'll wait and I've already got something halfway typed up, ready to file for your ass. And I was like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I doing this? And that's part of the reason why I'm I'm doing this podcast shit. I mean, it's just my opinion. You don't have to listen. You can cut it off whatever you want. But I get to vent, and it gets out, and people either hear it or they don't. For the four or five or two or negative two people who listen to this every week, I get my opinion off, and it's gone. And and it's like therapy for me. I get to let it go. And I've slowed down on the trolling, except when we talk about certain sports figures. I won't really bring that up. I've done that too much. But it was a way for me to, to move away from that. And some days I'm heavy on Facebook, and other days I leave this shit alone. All day long, and I got 15 whatever fucks on my phone. But neither here nor there. It's good to see that the policy got changed because just hearing that shit on the news every day is like it's draining, it's exhausting, and you think when you think like that, if you're a decent person, automatically your mind should flip to the people going through it. The mothers and fathers without their children, the children without their parents, the people who got separated on the way just trying to get here. People got to think about the why sometimes. Like, why are people traveling all this way, risking this, just to get to this country? It's like, to me, when people get mad and people fleeing to this country, it's like, almost like, you're mad at your own team. If I can, let me see if I can phrase it better. It's like, you're mad at your own marketing. It's like saying, hey, I got this store. And in this store, we have the best shit in the world. We got dope prices. Everybody can get in. All the opportunities in this store. It's like we Walmart. But then, when people try to come to Walmart, you're like, hold on, fam. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> you can't come here. I didn't mean you. You don't have enough money to get into Walmart. I'm not looking for you. I'm looking for them over there. So you stay out there. You stay out there. And that, that's just how I look at the country sometimes. It may be simple, but I'm a simple person, and that's just how I look at it. And I mean the fact that this man signed an executive order, it, it's a win in a way, but I'm kind of trying to figure out what's happening behind the scenes with that because, as we all know, this type of shit usually happens from him when, he's, when something else is going on. Like, you you know, you wave the left hand to to distract from the right. And that's what we normally see. So I wonder what's going to come out in the news the next couple of days. Or if somebody talks some sense to him. Maybe his wife talks some sense to him. I don't know, maybe somebody did something. Or maybe it's because the Homeland Security had a bunch of protesters at her door blasting the audio of the separated children that were locked up and crying. Maybe that's maybe that's what happened. Hmm? Maybe. And... I don't feel bad for her. Like, I really don't. When you stand next to somebody who does these things or you stand next to an organization that's that's doing something unfavorable in public eye, in the public eye, these type of things happen to you. And that's just what it is. You can't run roughshod on everybody and think that nobody's going to resist you. Nobody's going to have an opinion. Nobody's going to want to say anything. This world does not work like that. Or at least this country doesn't work like that. Somebody ain't going to have something to say, especially when you piss off white people. Because as minorities, we can yell and scream and all that shit all we want. And it may not go that far. But when you piss off some white people, some people who can get days off of work, <laughs> boy, boy, oh boy, they're going to be on your ass. And uh, they're going to be <laughs> relentless. And they're not going to stop until they get their way. It, it just, it be like that. More people are waking up and like, man... We're all one people. We should not be doing this. And it's going to change the country in the next 30, 40, 50 years, hopefully sooner than that. But the country's going to start to turn around. And these little pockets of people that don't want to be around nobody else and want to look down on people that are different or whatever, they're going to slowly start to go away. And I'm telling you now because it's it's already being put into the heads of kids that, hey, man, let's try to include everybody. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but this agenda is being pushed. The inclusion agenda is being pushed, and I am not mad at that. Now, 
I will say this. What you want to teach your kid in your household, that's your business. But if you teach them to not interact with a certain group of people, you are going to limit them, especially the way our country is going now. So shout out to all the protesters that were outside our house. Her name is, I think, Bridget Kristen Nielsen. I almost said Bridget Nielsen. Bridget Nielsen, by the way, gave birth. And she's like 54. That's weird. But Kristen Nielsen, the Homeland uh, Secretary, and they were uh, at our house making all type of noise and shit. And I just thought that was funny. And I don't know if it happened before or after Maxine Waters, but <laughs> I know old Maxine was out there uh, giving a little rah rah speech. And she basically was like, hey, man, keep that same energy. If you don't like the way a politician is acting, if you don't like the policies that they're supporting, when you see them, let them know. Let them know how you feel. She said, well, you at the gas station, at um, <laughs> the restaurant, or you see them anywhere, let them know how you feeling. She was like, push back. And I know she physically didn't mean push back, which some ass on Twitter was like, she's telling people to attack them. And that's not at all what she said. But she was definitely like, push back, you know, resist. Show them what's up and let them know what's going on. And I can appreciate that. I'm just saying, if you're going to do something, please, if you feel a certain way about a politician and you want to address them, please be careful. Don't get yourself shot up by somebody's security. Address them in a manner at which they do not feel threatened. But if you want to voice your displeasure, hey, man, they are actually public servants. They work for you. They depend on elections. Let them know how you feel. If you can do so and you can articulate your point without sounding like a jackass. Because that's the one thing you don't want to do is be on the internet looking like a dumbo because you got too emotional and said something crazy to somebody. And you didn't have anything back in your statement. Emotion's only going to get you so far in this country. I'm sorry it sucks, but emotion is only going to get you so far if you don't have anything fact-based. That's just me being real. But sometimes emotion can get you a win. Emotion, if you have morals, whatever, and another person, <laughs> and uh, Trump's, and his... Uh, in this inner circle, I'll say, found that out. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the uh, White House press secretary, was in the, um, she was in a restaurant, and I think it was Alexandria, Virginia, and the owner was basically like, he was like, hey man, <laughs> I don't want you in here, man. He basically had to put her out based on his morals. He's like, I don't want to serve you based on your based on your morals and how you interact and who you work for. I don't want to serve you in my restaurant. Told her, see you let her by. Her and her family. Get on up out of here. And do I feel bad? No, because when you put out that energy, you're gonna get that energy back. If you put out energy that makes you look like you like you separative and you wanna cause division in the country, if people feel that way about you, or if you do you just do shit without considering other people for your job, that's how people are gonna perceive you in real life. That's how they're gonna think your attitude is. That's what they're going to think your moral code is. That's what they're going to think anybody who's next to you. They, that's going, they're going to think that's how they act. So they were like, hey, man, based on how I feel, I don't want to serve you. I don't want you in my house. It goes against, or I don't want you in my place of business. It, it goes against my beliefs. See you later, bye. And that's what he did. I mean, it's the same thing with that Supreme Court case about the, the cake. So, I mean, hey, if you're going back one, you got to back the other, man. That's just how I feel. Is it terrible? No, it's not. It's quite entertaining. I I rather enjoy it that man. Um, it was great. It was great. And in other uh ridiculous news, away from politics, I was you know surfing the world of war a uh, world star man. I don't really go in there too much. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I have been going there more recently, just because sometimes they have news stories every now and again, and I see something crazy. So in the pinch before I do this. You know, pay a world star visit can pay off for your boy. So I decided to check it out. And there was one video I saw where they found a snake. They found a snake, and I, I think it was Indonesia had swallowed somebody, or they thought it swallowed somebody, and they cut that motherfucker open. And sure enough, there was a woman inside. The snake had swallowed like maybe a few hours before. I was like, God damn, you talk about hard living? Shit, you won't ever catch me anywhere near Indonesia in the jungle if I can help it. Hell no. And I'm. I ain't small. I'm I'm kind of a big old motherfucker. I'm like right at about close six feet, 200 plus pounds. I'm not little. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gigantic, but I'm not little. 
And my shoulder's too broad for a snake to eat me, but I'm still scared. That mom, the motherfucker still bite. So there's certain places you will not catch me, and that is one of them. And the next place is in whatever church this priest was in because they were about to baptize his baby. And you know how babies are. If you have kids or if you're somebody, auntie, if you uncle, you know how they get. Sometimes they're fussy, especially when you have them dealing with people that they don't know and they don't recognize. So from the looks of this video, the baby was being kind of fussy. Maybe the baby needed a nap. Maybe the baby was wet. Maybe the baby was hungry. I don't know. But they had brought the baby up to the priest so the priest could baptize the baby. And the baby was already wilding. So then the priest put his hands on the baby trying to get the baby to calm down. You could tell he was getting frustrated. He's an older, older man, right? And when I tell you he got mad and slapped this baby, like I didn't think I was really going to hear in the video, but he damn sure kind of lit the baby up. Pop! And that people kind of like, oh. And my thing is, like, I'm mad at the priest, but I'm more mad at whoever that baby's father is. Because I would have beat his ass. Ain't no way in hell that you going to smack my child. I don't give a damn what your job is. I don't care who you are. None of that. If you didn't put that baby in there and that baby didn't come out of there, you ain't smacking my child unless I give you exclusive permission. And that usually only lies with aunties and grandparents. And he smacked this little baby in the face, man. I would have beat his ass. No way in hell that's happening. Like, I don't give a damn where I'm at. I ain't get baptized. I'm buck-ass wild. So I definitely would have slapped the shot at that priest. I'd have made him apologize to my baby. And teeth on the floor and all. That, that shit that just ain't going down, man. <laughs> Not, nah. No way in hell. And speaking of slaps, before, right before I did this, I got on Twitter to steal some more news updates because I was being lazy. And I saw that Nipsey Hussle slapped shit out of somebody before the BET Awards. Like, I guess he was trying to get to rehearsal and trying to get in somewhere. And the guy didn't want to let him park. And they got to arguing. But the thing that set Nipsey off was that his bodyguard or his homeboy was with him. And his homeboy had the cone. And before they were just kind of arguing, going back and forth. It was all verbal. Nothing, right? I don't know what his bodyguard said to bro. But his bodyguard had the cone in his hand. And I don't know if he made the other guy feel threatened, but the dude smacked the cone aggressively out the bodyguard's hand. So that shit set Nipsey off. He slapped the shit out of bruh. Now, as soon as he slapped him, you know, people grabbed him up and made sure they got separated. So there wasn't really no scuffle afterwards. But you could tell he was hot. And I'm I'm looking at it like this. Usually when you got rappers like this, rappers who appear to be authentic, who are really where they from, right? The people they hire as their bodyguards are usually their homies. So the person that was with him was probably somebody who was close to him. And it probably wasn't really his bodyguard. It probably was just his man that happened to be with him at the time that the press mislabeled his bodyguard. So it's when he, when the dude snapped that cone, like Nipsey snapped, he slapped the shit out of cuz. And hey, that's just, that's just what happens. Man. You fuck with people that's close to somebody else. You can't, you can't forget that these guys really come from these places, some of them. He not one of these rainbow-haired, talking shit, trolling online dudes. He's a, he's a, he's a grown-ass man. He's not one of these kids. So when you do something like that, like even if that was me, like once you, you smack something out of somebody's hand, to me, that that means it's on. You know, and I'm not the most violent person in the world, but that is a clear signal of aggression to me. That means it's on. Like if you felt threatened, you should have backed up a little bit. But hopefully uh, the situation works itself out. And there's no jail time behind that because, you know, that shit's going to be floating around on social media. And that's the only reason I said some shit about it. Had I not seen it or or had I been there in person, I wouldn't have said nothing. But this shit's already out there because I seen it. I'm in San Diego and he's in L.A. And uh, real quick, if you live in the U.S., let me give you let me give you a little bit of advice. Get the fuck out the house. I wasn't really going to say this in this part, but get out the house. Since I'm speaking on California... Get out, travel, go see some shit. There's two types of people in this world. People who left home, people who didn't. If you ain't never left home, nine times out of ten, you don't know shit. Get out your comfort zone for a little bit and go see, if not the world, go see the country. Because the country is beautiful. I've driven across it. I've flown across this motherfucker a couple times. It's nice, especially out in California. Every American should see the Hollywood sign. Just like every American should go to D.C. Just like every American should see the Empire State Building and should see the Statue of Liberty. 
that's just a personal thing for me. Every American should see these things because these are the these are like the the logos or the the landmarks in our country. Like Mount Rushmore, maybe that's cool, but I'm not big on that because you're just gonna go look, look at some shit. Okay, there's the mountain, and they probably got some gift shops around that motherfucker, and you out. It ain't like Disney World. I think everybody should hit Disney World or Disneyland, whichever coast you on. And because there's other things to do in that area, in that city. But definitely travel, man. Get out, see the, see the country, man. If you got to drive, whatever, save you some money, man, to get out and see this thing. You should go to Vegas, too. I ain't made it there yet, so I ain't going to push for that. Can't really talk that shit. But go to L.A., go to Miami, go to Houston, go to these big cities and see what they got what they got cracking. Go to Chicago. Just don't go to one of the wrong sides of town. Go to L.A. and don't wear the wrong color and don't wear the wrong baseball hat. Know where you at at all times. But go see these places. Get your ass out in this world. It's, it's, it's a big country with all types of shit in it. Anyway, yeah, uh, Nipsey slapped the shit out of cuz, <laughs> and it was great. I found out about it all the way in L.A., I'm down here in San Diego in my lovely Chula Vista area. So, yeah, man, I thought that was crazy. What else? Am I going to jump into sports right now? You got damn right. And I'm going to start with the World Cup. Now, I've said it before, I'm not the biggest soccer person, but like I told y'all, my ancestor was big for me to do that right before the World Cup. So I had more people to root for, and I'm <laughs> rooting for Nigeria and Senegal right now both of which you were doing decent. Nigeria lost to Croatia, but then they won against Iceland. They won. They beat them by two goals. I think Musa scored both goals. That was a pretty good game. Pretty good, and it kept them alive for a little bit. I think they play, I think they play Messi and the boys next. They play Argentina. The other game, the game I watched today, was pretty goddamn good. Now, I don't know what physical it is as far as soccer goes. I don't watch it a lot, but I was watching this game between Senegal and Japan, and this shit to me look physical. I'm a football fan, you know what I mean? So for me to see soccer players just openly pushing and shoving each other like they did in this game was, was one, surprising, but two, it made it more entertaining. It lets you know how intense the game really is. And even though they were knocking each other down, you would see them still help each other up. And the way the World Cup is, you see people exchanging things from their countries before games. It lets you know that it's all in the spirit of competition. Nobody harbors really any you know ill will. And the game was intense. Like, I, I just really liked how, how they played. And I watched the bulk of the game. And in the end, they was t ended up being tied 2-2. I don't know what you call that in the World Cup land. I don't know what that is. I just found out that they put teams in different groups. I thought it was kind of like a free-for-all. You got Team East, Northwest, and South. They all played, and then you got your Final Four or whatever. I'm thinking like NCAA because I'm ignorant like that. But it was very entertaining. If you haven't given soccer a try, give it a try, man. It ain't going to hurt you. Give it a try. And the way these concussions are set up, I might, if it was me, I might push my son towards soccer. Just saying. Because I'm damn sure going to try to get one of my daughters to play. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was pretty good, man. And to see them tie and after all that, people, you know, running all around all over the damn field and finally being able to score a goal, I thought it was pretty cool. So check it out if you ain't been checking it out. Find somebody to root for. Do your ancestry so you can see which country you know, you can you can piggyback on. You'll have a whole lot more options. So I can go Scotland, Ireland, <laughs> Senegal, Nigeria right now. And there's probably something else in there I ain't really claiming. But, God damn it, I got four teams since the U.S. out. I would have had five because I don't know shit about soccer, and I'm cheating. What else? Um. Yeah, the draft, the NBA draft. So I... Apparently, I was wanting the Bulls to get the wrong junior. I had it wrong. So I'm thinking they're going to get Michael, Michael Porter Jr., but they passed on him. And I was shocked because the mock draft had him going there. And I've been upset with Chicago for a while as far as how they've been, you know, tanking and all that shit because I still don't think it paid off. I think they would have had a bad season anyway, and they probably would have had a shot at a decent player. But I'm going to give this season a chance to see what they do. So they didn't get Michael Porter Jr. They got the better junior, which was Wendell Carter Jr., I think. I hope I got his name right. Wendell Carter Jr. And uh, I completely overlooked this guy. He plays for Duke, and I was hearing so much about Bagley and all that shit. I didn't really hear about this guy until somebody told me about him. 
but they basically called him the thunder to Bagley's lightning. This is the guy that's protecting the rim. This is the guy that's getting the rebounds and shit. He's doing, like, the tough work inside for Duke. And I'm thinking that's all he did. So when they drafted him, I was kind of like, okay, I can. you want a rim protector? I get that. But we need more offense. And then I looked up his ESPN highlight tape, and apparently the kid can score just at all three levels. He can score from behind the, behind the arc. He can he can work inside in the post, and he can shoot the mid-range jumper. So I think the Bulls caught a steal at seven. That's if this guy pans out. Now, my man is 6'10", 250. So he got the size to be a center in the NBA, especially with the way they play right now, stretching everything out. You don't need to be 270, damn near 300 pounds and shit like Shaq was. If you can move and you're athletic and all that shit, and you can shoot as a big man, you're fine. But with his ability to rebound and and block shots, it's a plus. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with Robin Lopez. I don't know if they would go as far as to start uh, Carter. I don't know if they'll start him, but if they did, if they, and then keep Robin Lopez, are they going to play him at the four and play marketing at the three? Now, I don't know what they did with marketing last year. I thought he played the four, but they play him at the three. That's an automatic mismatch. The man's seven foot. And then you got Levine at the two and Dunn at the one. I mean, you might have a decent little squad, man. It depends if they play defense or not. And that means you'd have Bobby Porter's coming off the bench. And I forgot, and I don't know what they're going to do with Valentine. Um, or maybe Bobby Porter starts uh, at the four, and then Carter comes off the bench in his rookie season, which would be smart. But we'll see, man. You drafted this man at seven. I think you're going to want to see him play. And then with Denzel Valentine, I don't know what they're going to do with him because they just drafted another goddamn small forward. Like, I don't know what Fred Hoiberg wants. He's drafted like four or five wings every in the past few years or stretch forward, which is – basically a, the other small forward or the other you know yeah it's like other small the, the tallest small forward on the team that's all it really it really is in my book it's it'll be interesting to see how they work that in with their rotation like i want to see what they're doing now i'm gonna pay more attention and try to watch more of their games this year because sometimes last year like i was kind of glad i couldn't see them because of the shit they were doing it pissed me off i'm, I'm kind of upset they didn't address point guard maybe they believe in jerry and grant they also got um, Justin Holiday there. So it's going to be dope. We'll see, man. They got some pieces. They just got to put it together. And they got Nwebe. I don't know how to say his name, but, yeah, they got a few guys. I think somebody's getting moved or somebody probably didn't get resigned. I just didn't pay attention to it. But we'll see. And the Lakers got Mo Wagner and somebody else with a European name. I'm sorry. I forgot his name. I forgot to write it down. But Mo Wagner seems to be a decent guy, man. He seems to be able to shoot, space the floor, get rebounds, man. We'll see how he works out in L.A. I'm thinking for Lonzo's sake, it's somebody else he could push the ball out to. I definitely don't think this guy's going to start anytime soon. But I think with him and Kuzma coming off the bench, that's if Kuzma doesn't start, that'll be a, a decent offensive attack coming off the bench. Now we just got to see how they fill out the roster in free agency and who else they get to come in there and play point, especially if they don't. Because um, I don't think they got IT. I'm pretty sure he didn't resign. So we'll see. Speaking of the Lakers, um, I'm surprised that people actually thought he's going to get drafted there, but I don't know. Leangelo Ball, who people was campaigning for to be on the Lakers, didn't get drafted. And I'm not saying I'm shocked, but I'm saying I think he could have made a difference on the team with his shooting ability. And I was kind of, I was slightly surprised. But free agency's coming up, and I think he'll get, I think he'll get a run somewhere. He may get a, he may get some workouts, maybe a ten day contract. We'll see. I don't think he's gonna do G League, or he, he may do G League. He may, and he don't have to because his father got the JBA. It was like it's almost like why would you go play in the G League if your pops got the JBA? And that's why I think his father's so dope because he made he basically made it foolproof. Like my son's gonna play basketball somewhere. And after he went and put on a tournament while his son was playing in Lithuania, I think the whole time, I would have to assume the whole time he was doing that, he would just kind of see how the junior leagues ran so that when he wanted to start his own in the States, he could just look at what they were doing and then put some of that in the JBA. And we'll, we'll see what the type of talent he gets. I hope it doesn't 
I, I, I hope it doesn't de- destroy somebody's chances of making it to the NBA. And when I say that, I mean it's like I hope instead of going to college, like if you have the skill set to succeed at the college game, because let's keep it a buck, even though I like what LeVar is doing, I love what he's doing. Black businessman making waves, making a way for other black people to work, making a way for these athletes to get to the league without having to go to college. And for some of them, it is actually a waste of time because if you're not going to get educated, you're basically wasting your time. I understand you're going to play ball and shit you want to get looked at, but at the end of the day, you, you're kind of stressing yourself out because you're going to you're going to play ball, you got to go to school, keep your classes up, and all this other shit, your schedule's crazy. So you may not be able to focus 100% on your craft for playing basketball. And say you get hurt, or the team, gonna, the school going to throw you away. They can't do shit with you. You out of there. You're useless to them. That scholarship going to be gone. You out of there. At least with the JBA, you kind of got more lead. When you get put on the team, I'm going to assume they make a little bit of money. I didn't look too deeply into it. But with, with that, you don't have to deal with the added pressures and responsibilities of college. I think it's cool they got another way. So shout out to him for um, giving people another avenue to make it to the league. And once he, if he keeps it going, I think it will start to attract enough talent so that people actually want to go there and play. And maybe he gets some big names that are like, I'm coming out of high school, but I'm not fucking with the university when I can go play in the JV and do what the fuck I want to do and not waste my time going to classes that I'm going to half-ass anyway. Because if you think about it, if you go to school for a year and leave, I mean, you knocked out some credits, but were you really focused? You're only really in class half the year because you, you're going away in basketball games the rest of the time. So, I mean, is it worth it? Now, if you want to be on the biggest stage possible, absolutely. If you want to go get you some education, what's well, absolutely worth it? But you have to realize that trade-off. Are you willing to play basketball, work, and go to school? Because the minute them grades slip, your ass is going to be on academic probation. But if you go play in the JBA, you ain't got to worry about that. You just got to worry about getting yourself some more money to fund yourself when they ain't playing. But the one thing you will have, you will have tape. You will have some tape on you while you're out there playing. So I think it's a good look. For guys who may not make it to college, or they may only get accepted to college they don't want to play at, it's going to be a decent level of competition in JBA because people always want another avenue to make it to the best league in the world. So there you go. And then uh, what else? Kawhi Leonard forcing a trade. I don't know if I talked about that last episode or or not, but uh, apparently Kawhi Leonard wants out of San Antonio. If I spoke about it last week, my bad, but he wants out. And uh, Pop went to talk to him in San Diego to see if he can get him to come back. But Pop is like, we ain't trading you. And or we ain't trading you to nobody in the West. I just don't know how it got so bad. And I, I'm one of them people that I get used to seeing the player in a certain space that I don't want to see him move on, especially if I feel like it's a good situation. But let's keep it a buck. Let's be real. Spurs fans, you guys are basically in the in the middle of a of a low key rebuild. You guys did recool. You guys did retool. You did get Lamarcus Aldridge, but he ain't no Tim Duncan. You have an aging Pau Gasol. Your point guard is aging. Who knows if Manu will be back? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Murray had a good year his first year. Second year, eh, eh, not so. Eh, you guys still made it to the shit, to the playoffs and shit without Kawhi. And who knows how good this team could be without him. But, you know, let's keep it a buck, man. You guys are you guys are going through like a, I won't say a complete, it's not like a complete teardown. It's not a complete rebuild. You guys are going through a retooling. And you're getting pieces in there. You see how they work. You do have some good young guys in there. You do have slow-mo. Like I said, you do have Murray. I can't understand for the life of me why y'all let Jonathan Simmons go. I don't understand that. He works so well there. And I think maybe that could have been another reason for Kawhi to leave. He didn't like the direction the team was going. But it definitely don't help when you your teammates are talking shit publicly to reporters about your injury. That shit definitely don't help. I think he should punch, you know, Tony Parker, whoever says some shit, 
Go in there, punch them in the stomach or the face. Get out your feelings, you know, and uh, see if you can rebuild that relationship. If not, no brother, move on, do your thing, and I wish you much success. The Bulls are always an option for you. Never forget. I know you're talking that New York shit. That's cool. But the Bulls are always an option. Don't be afraid to go to Chicago, man. We need you. Don't be afraid to go to L.A. They need you. And with L.A., I think I think Paul George is going to show up there, man. I think he's going to try to get out there. But if New Orleans has a space, if I'm a free agent, unless LeBron's like, hey, I'm staying in Cleveland, come to the East, come rock with me, I'm either trying to go New Orleans and then maybe L.A. I'm not really trying to go nowhere else. If I want to leave Russell Westbrook, I'm trying to go New Orleans, L.A. If LeBron ain't going to stay in Cleveland. Because that, that New Orleans team is going to be tough. Houston ain't got the money. New Orleans may have it because I don't know if they're going to sign back uh, DeMarcus Cousins or not. He coming off an Achilles, who knows. But there's a monster <laughs> in uh, New Orleans. Like I said it many times before, but there's a monster out there. Somebody's going to go play with him. Somebody's going to go down there and try to hoop with Anthony Davis. And that somebody is a very wise individual. And I think, yeah, that's it. That's all I got for sports, man. I can't wait for football season, man. I keep seeing these teams popping up on my phone with these recruits, man. I don't see Florida State a lot. I'm getting nervous. I know we got a lot of eyes early, though, so I ain't too, too nervous. Also, on the MTV Awards, MTV Movie Awards, Black Panther won a lot, as they should have. They won Best Hero. Best villain, I think best action movie or, or movie or whatever. But they won a lot, as they should have. And the best hero award, that was a great moment because my man Chad with Bozeman, he brought up the guy from the Waffle House shooting in uh, Tennessee. He brought that man, I think, what's his name? James, James Shaw Jr., the guy who disarmed that guy in the shooting, man. He brought him up and he gave him the award, man, which uh, only is going to send his stock higher. Old Chadwick, he's, his stock is only going to go higher. And I think that was a great moment for that guy, man. He deserved it after saving lives, man. So congratulations to both of them for doing great things in the, out in the world. And that's, uh, that's, that's about it. I do want to address something real quick. Um, reference to music, but I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to get this off real quick. Hey, man, um, when it comes to video games, I don't talk about them a lot because I'm not an expert in them. But there's one particular game that I'm a huge nerd about, and that's Fallout 4. If you haven't played it, played it, just lose hours of yourself in that. And at E3, they announced Fallout 76, which is basically like a prequel. I don't know enough about it. I'm not enough of a video game nerd to sit here and talk to you about it intelligently, but you're supposed to be able to play online and with other people, and that's supposed to be an easier way to survive. It's not the only way, but it's just a way. If you get with people and play it, it's supposed to be better for you. Whatever, we'll see because it comes out in November. So Fallout 76, November, I'm going to get it. And if I don't like it, I'm going to tell y'all about it. But hey. But the one thing I want to talk about is in the music shit is um, referring back to social media. I notice online a lot of kids say, well, y'all y'all don't like this young music. This shit ain't for y'all. This shit meant for kids or whatever. This ain't the third. Now, I am in my 30s. The likelihood of me liking some shit from a young kid or somebody 19 or whatever years old may or may not be, you know, likely. But I'm not giving you no pass on that shit because you're young. Once you do something, you put it out for people to enjoy. You also put it out for people to critique. So just because you're young and your music may not be targeted for me, if it pops up on my radio, I have a right to call it trash. That's just how I feel. But the youngins, they do have a point. Maybe this music is not targeted for me. That is cool. I get it, but I need y'all to apply them same rules when it comes to older rappers making music. Now, I realize being in a relationship is not, you know, in everybody's daily life. So people shit on this Jay-Z and Beyonce time, us old heads, I feel like I have the right to say, you know, it's time for you to go to bed. You ain't at this level of maturity yet where you can appreciate somebody making an album with their wife or making an album like Nas or making an album like J. Cole. They say shit like it's boring. Like, don't let your lack of maturity distract you from the level that these guys are at. 
you have to look at this and be like, man, that's not for me as well. If I can't call that trash, you got to be like, well, that's not for me. But in five and six and seven years, it probably will be. That's the difference between what we're listening to and what y'all listening to in five years and shit in two, three months, and maybe a year. That shit's going to be in the can. That shit's going to be trash. It's going to be over with. Because these microwave rappers, just like J. Cole would say, you follow on these trends, it's going to be a rap for you. It's going to be it. And you're going to resort to antics on the internet. Look at Plies. Plies rode a trend for a little bit. Plies is the fuck out of here. Gone. He had some success. He had some really decent success. More than a lot of these kids have. But you know what Plies is at now? Making fucking videos. I think he's still making music, but nobody is buying that shit on a national scale like they were before. Fell the fuck off. Yachty been real quiet. It's ice cold over there for Yachty. The last time I seen Uzi, he was chasing down Rich the Kid. <laughs> um, Kodak Black, I think is, I don't know if he's in jail, but it's quiet for him too. He may be working on his album, but it's quiet for him too. And just because I'm pointing out a few that a lot of people don't like, don't mean I don't, I don't like them. I've listened to their music. I tried, even with Future. And he, he's old. I feel like he's trash. I've listened to the music. Most of us old guys have listened to the music. We hear it. That shit, we hear it in the car. Doom, 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 doom. We hear it beating the shit. But we actually go to listen to it. That's what we have in the problem. And the, <laughs> the lack of lyrics and the lack of content is what we have the problem at. And that's not to say that all young rappers are trash. Like, I can fuck with A Boogie. He's a young guy. I can fuck with Joey Badass. I can listen to Ray Sermon. Not all the young guys are trash. But some of them are. And we just got to be real. Some of these guys ain't that good. And um, on, on a young rapper note, I'm going to be honest about something. The dude, uh, X, the Tentacion cat who passed away, who was murdered. Not to, I don't want to just say passed away. I want to say the truth. This man was murdered. I don't know what the allegations were about that man. I'm not going to pretend to be that, that Keno, his lifestyle, whether he did or did not beat that girl up or whatever. Like, I don't know much about him, right? But I will say I may have underestimated his effect. I don't like, or I didn't and I don't like the comparison to Tupac that people have made. Like, man, this shit. And I think it was probably like a joke post somebody made. Like, oh, this is kind of like when Tupac passed away. Not, not quite. I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far only because the shit Tupac was saying was was deeply rooted in the effects of the government on black people in America. And he was a much more successful art, uh, artist. He had a much wider audience and he had so much more content in his music. Not to say that this kid X doesn't because I don't know. I don't listen to his shit. There's never been nothing that piqued my interest about him musically. I've heard other people say he made some good music. At some point, I may go by and and try to listen to it. But I can't. I real. I'm not willing to put him on the same level as Pac. Pac alive now would have transcended probably f- further than Jay Z. I'm thinking Pac probably wouldn't have been full activist mode at this point. That's just me. And that's not me trying to put Pac on his pedestal because Jay-Z's my favorite rapper all the time. This Pac, his, tra- his trajectory, where he was going and the things he was saying, I don't know if he could have still just been a rapper slash actor. I think he would have been a rapper, activist, actor. I think that's kind of how it would have went. But to say this kid X had that same impact, I think is, I think it's a, an emotional statement. It's them trying to almost connect with us on some level because in the middle we didn't really lose anybody like that after Biggie and Pac passed we didn't lose a rapper I'm gonna say like like that with that much popularity since I may be forgetting somebody but I don't think we lost anybody on that level because Jay-Z and I are still here like other than like like Jam Master J you know somebody like that other than losing him, and he was, to be honest, I was around, but he was, I would say he's before my time with him being the DJ run DMC. But I'm going to say this. 
I under I did underestimate the impact he had with these kids, and I didn't bring into you know uh, into account the X factor, which is social media and access. These kids had so much access to these stars that they may have felt like they known them. Like uh, we had to rely on the music, we had to listen to CDs over and over and over and watch movies over and over and over and and make tapes and all that shit. We had to actually learn the artists through the music because they were not as accessible as they are now, which is obvious. Now these kids can get on Twitter, boom, 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 and be in the inbox of artists in the second. These artists are young kids and they're young people as well, and young people like attention, especially when they're trying to become famous. So these cats are going on Instagram Live and just interact with fans, which to me is cool. And now I kind of see the impact they have because while they they can't respond to everybody, you know, on the Instagram Live, they're definitely interacting. They're making themselves available to the people. And with the, you know, with the advent of the internet and them being able to get their music out directly to a core group of people, which again I think is great, they do have a a deep hold on the youth. And while I think people's interest is fleeting as they mature, like, oh, yeah, like, no disrespect to them. And had he lived in three or four years, I don't think the same people would have been checking. I don't think the same people would have been checking for his Instagram live. But the impact he made in his short amount of time is big. Now, you can listen to music and you can get one thing from music or, like I said, you can pay attention to interviews. Now, homie didn't do a bunch of interviews, but he did do shit where he talked to these kids via his social media account. So I, I guess I, I got to give the kids some credit because, I, like you said, somebody had 20, you got to give them time and you can't you can't jump on them or whatever. You, you can't do that. That's Because at 20, I was buck-ass. Well, I didn't give a fuck about nothing. I didn't have nothing to give a fuck about. So I, I can kind of see that argument. But then again, it's like I don't like the argument because we didn't have the shit y'all have. So all that, oh, when you're in your 20s and shit, you buck ass wild. No, at, in your 20s now, you have a thousand times more opportunities than I had, especially with the way the internet is. As far as jobs, as far as networking, making connections and all and these things, you got a thousand more opportunities than I had, and I'm only 35. So that argument to me, it's, it's kind of crazy, but... This man didn't have an impact. I will respect it. I just don't like the Tupac comparison because I don't know what this man made as far as, far as music. But I don't know if he's got you no know, Brenda got a baby, no dear mama, you know. So it's all about no. It's all about you. It's like keep your head up. Like you, you can't really compare this guy to Tupac. Because then I can throw the interviews out and put the songs up, and then you got to tell me what's what. Because I think more one was more social issues and one's more mental health issues. So I don't think they really compare. But rest in peace to that man and for his fans out there, man. I, I feel y'all. I know what it's like to lose an artist who you think is really, really dope. Because at the time, I didn't really appreciate Tupac like I should have because of bullshit as East Coast, West Coast propaganda that was thrown out by the media. I didn't appreciate Tupac like I should have, and now he gone. So with that being said, peace to uh, X, X's fans and all that. And I think that's it, man. I felt like I had something else to tell y'all, but I really don't think I do, man. It's fucked up to end on that note. But it is what it is, man. Hey, cherish these artists while they're here. While they're going through their little beef, we can look at the records back and forth and enjoy that shit and laugh and and talk shit about it and argue amongst each other, but let's not forget that these artists are people. And um, people pass, man. So let's try to, well, let's do what Drake did. Thank them now for the art they're giving you, for the things they're doing to make you happy. Appreciate them out of here because a car wreck, a plane crash, a gunshot, a disease can get them the fuck out of here. Just like that. Like the same thing can happen to you. So cherish your life and cherish the life of people you care about. And uh, keep doing it, man. Keep doing it. Trade trade five KD. Keep doing it. Do what you got to do to make yourself happy. Do what you got to do to get further in life. Have fun, man, and make sure the people around you have fun. If you're going to be negative around a bunch of people, get from over there until you get your positivity back and then bring those vibes back 
on the right side, damn it. Don't fuck up my day because you're having a bad attitude. With that being said, make tomorrow a better day than today. Learn something tomorrow you didn't learn yesterday or you didn't learn today or however I say that shit. Anyway, I could be reached at noplayinthisride.gmail.com, Twitter, noplay247, capital N, lowercase o, capital P, L-A-Y, noplay247 at Twitter, noplayinthisride on Facebook, and my Instagram is jdthedopeness904. I'm on Instagram. Um, yeah, that's it, man. That's that's it. Y'all go out there and be good, man. Make people happy. Make yourself smile. All that good shit. Sunshine, rainbows, peace.